We've already told you that our team was uh, not really American at all, so I'm not going to show you that slide. But read this. Half the land in American cities is about cars, not about people. Can you imagine? This is a parking garage. Um, wouldn't it be great if it wasn't there? I mean, and not for those of you driving Audis, but, um, but here we have half our land, for, not for people, when now people are moving back into cities in America, particularly on the coasts where all the innovation is happening. And we need the land. We can't use it for that. It's not just the garages that are taking up all this space. It's, um, it's the roads. Um, Americans have enormously wide lanes on roads. They're, they're this wide, you'd think it was because every American was a drunk driver and was weaving all along the road. This is actually not the case. Um, we simply have more space than we need for roads. Um, we wonder, 50 years ago, 60 years ago, we thought about the future and we thought we knew what it was going to be like, and it looked like this. Um, but in fact, we always get it wrong. And so how do we actually plan for a future, a future in mobility, that will solve this problem of cities, of the congestion of cities, make them better places, not worse? And that's the problem we've really been trying to think about. But the problem with thinking about the future is we don't know. So what we came up with was the idea that what we need is what we call 4M, a multimedia mobility marketplace. It's hard to say all that. Um, and what this is, is a universal, comprehensive data platform that is a device that encourages innovation of all kinds, not just the big companies like Audi, but uh, if you want to start a rickshaw business, you can do that too. If you want to start a software business, an app, you can do that. And all this data can be aggregated. And this would make a huge difference to the vitality of innovation. But then all this data would also be used to uh, um, get us more information about where things are going and get information out for the user about all the options available to them. So to help us think about this, we imagined what the world would look like if there was no such thing as 4M. If we had what we have right now, which is a free-for-all, where technology is simply started up by one company after another after another in a complete absence of regulation, a complete absence of a controlled market. And we see huge problems coming out of this. Um, for example, in the city that we've chosen to look at, Somerville, which you saw a little bit of in the video at the beginning, um, in the land that's being developed there that uh, we're looking at, we would give 4% more land to cars. We'd take it away from people. Things would get worse. We'd get more population, but we'd also get 20% more pollution. And this is leading up to 2040. And also, we would see 43.6% more traffic. Now, of course, for Audi, this could be fantastic, right? 43% uh, more cars in Somerville, but it's not going to be sustainable. And so what we looked at was, well, what if you had this comprehensive data management system that we're talking about? And there, we see a very different picture. We free up 11% more land for different uses in the city, and we'll talk about what those could be. Yes, we have a growing population, but it's less congested. We have 15% lower uh, emissions, pollution, and we, our traffic is reduced by nearly 14%. So we have, these are extremes, either ends of the scale. So what we call, we need to achieve this is what we call a virtuous cycle. I learned something very important in Ingolstadt, um, that actually um, there's no such word as a virtuous cycle in Germany. So I have to explain it to you. Um, apparently, you have a Teufelskreis, um, which is a vicious cycle where things get worse and worse and worse. But so we have invented, and this is my only contribution to the German language, um, the Engelskreis. And uh, we're going to tell you how it works. And so um, imagine if we have 4M really working, um, we have accelerated innovation. We already have a great pace of innovation, but innovation within a controlled and managed space will be beneficial innovation. And this leads to more multimodal options. It means more people able to take the train, more people able to use bikes, um, more people able to walk to work even, and uh, more people using car sharing, things like this. 
And this reduces the vehicle miles traveled and uh, reduces the vehicle count on the road, which in turn frees up a lot of land because we're not using all this land for parking, we're not using the roads as much, we don't need such wide roads for drunken drivers. Um, it makes much more land available for other things, more affordable development opportunities, increased diversified population, the kind of thing that really leads to a stronger and more vibrant community, and that in turn to a stronger and more diverse economy, a more active economy, and that in turn accelerates innovation. So you get this thing going around in a circle. Well, what are the innovation trends that drive this? There's one is vehicle innovation. And this is what Audi really specializes in at the moment. Um, piloted cars. The next with Audi really focuses on is piloted parking, a different application of technology, a very, very important one. And uh, the third is, we've already heard this mentioned, vehicle uh, car to X or V to X, as it's sometimes called where cars have conversations with traffic lights and with each other, and there's a whole car society out there. Um, the, my slide here just said four minutes rather than my next slide. It's puzzling. Um, the um, piloted cars, we tend to think, many people think that these will actually have this amazing effect of reducing the number of cars on the road by, by up to 70%. There are a number of studies by big consulting firms and by universities. And uh, you wonder, why would that be? Couldn't it just increase them? It might be heaven or it might be hell, the piloted car. We could have many more cars on the road. You know, I could uh, send my daughter off to her violin lesson, Lynn lesson in my piloted car. It could tool around the city for an hour while she could, couldn't find a parking place. And it would just stick on the road, an empty vehicle. So we need to manage this space. Um, innovation trends, the car sharing, the ride sharing, and the aggregators, these are wonderful systems that help you plan your trip by walking, by bike, by bus, and put it all together. You can go on Google and do this. Um, lots of wonderful things happening in that space, terrific projects, I think. Um, but they're not always good. I mean, just going back to that one for a minute, um, Uber, which has become very famous um, in American cities and indeed all over the world now, um, is in huge uh, trouble now with a lot of industries because of their unregulated nature and because of what they're doing to cab companies. And you see this kind of thing. But to go back to the third possibility then, without pricing and regulation, these wonderful innovations could indeed be hell rather than heaven. And so we can have some very good things happening like um, congestion pricing in London, um, which is now happening in a number of uh, European cities. There will be other methods for controlling um, things more centrally, like road roofs pricing and so forth. There are insurance issues. All these things need to be dealt with. So what we've done is we've taken this part of the city, this uh, city of ours, uh, I lived there myself, I've watched this for 15 years, which is going through the fastest development in Boston. It's a, an amazingly vibrant place. It's attracting all kinds of industries. And this... Uh, place you see here. This, this uh, was a, a Ford assembly plant at one point. Um, just a lesson there somehow. Um, and uh, there are other areas besides this. You can see it's right next to Boston. There's the whole Boston skyline in the background. It's uh, become this vibrant community. We have this um, low density industrial area right next to it. Terrific transportation infrastructure, but hugely underused land. And again, the city of Boston right behind it. And thirdly, we have Union Square, the old commercial center of the, place with the, of the city, with amazingly vibrant community, dozens of restaurants. Even a new German restaurant opened a few months ago with lo lo lots of verst. Um, and um, it's quite good. Um, and festivals there all the time, an amazingly multicultural community, lots of maker spaces, huge new ways of working. And so what's, what we see happening in these three areas with the planned development, if 4M is applied over the next 25 years, we will see 10,000 new jobs. And this is very precise planning based on square meters and calculations. And we will also see 7% more people, nearly 6,000 more people able to live there in a more diverse community. We will see increased tax revenue for cities, and again, we're able to take this idea, put it on the ground in a real city, in a real space, to go to the next stage beyond gathering the data and say, what can you do? How can you make what we do with car technology, with all these technologies, how can we really put it to work? 
and uh, we can reduce commuting time probably by 30%, not just for the people in their self-driving Audis, but also for the people riding buses, everything. And we can also create more public spaces for more vibrant community. Our health will be better because the air will be better. And that, we think, is how cars and technology and the Audi technology and the other technologies that are out there with a vibrant marketplace can transform the future. Thank you. Ha, ha, ha.